for thanks for helping us out here this morning. But uh, you go ahead and introduce yourself and let us know who you are. I'm Marin. I'm from Mrs. Gorski's nursing assistant program. Great. Hey, thanks, Marin. Uh, when we talk about student responsibilities with the nursing assistant program, could you uh, briefly speak about you know the homework uh, responsibilities of this course? I have about an hour of homework every night between the nursing aid training program, the med term homework, or um, different worksheets or labs that I have to prepare for or tests I have to study for. That's great. So you named a, a few different categories of responsibilities in this course. Uh, could you break those down just a little bit more so you have um, med terms as part of your class? And, and what else did you mention? Um, the nurse aid training program is uh, Okay, the nurse aid training program is information given to us by the state so we can take the CNA uh, test at the end of the year and become certified to become CNAs. And the med term homework actually articulates for college credit at Delta and you learn about different uh, abbreviations or um, terminology that is used in the medical field. Great. Now, I know that uh, quizzes and tests are a big part of this program. Could you speak a little bit about uh, your experience with quizzes and tests? We do have a lot of tests in this class. We have maybe about three every week, which does seem like a lot, but they organize them in a way that it's not overwhelming and they give you all of the material that is clear of what to study for beforehand so you're not nervous about if you studied for the right material and there's a guaranteed good grade if you do what is asked of you. Great. Now I know that uh, this program uses Canvas. Um, could you speak a little bit about your use with Canvas? Were you familiar with the program? Is it easy to use? Is it somewhat um, difficult to navigate? I had actually never used Canvas before this class. This was my first time using it. But it's really easy to use and they give you your own login and password and everything's really well organized so that you can uh, see what section you're supposed to be under and everything is underneath its own tab. It's actually a lot like Google Classroom. Great. With so many angles of responsibility, I would imagine that time management or organization are important skills to have in this class. Is that something that you find that you're utilizing? Yeah, there are a lot of different aspects of this class between labs, med term, NATP, which is the nurse aid training program, um, and what we call HOSA, which is the student club that is used at this school. And uh, we use calendars that's required to organize everything so you know what's due on what day, when to wear, um, scrubs and uh, what you're going to be doing the next day, and it really helps organize everything you're doing. Great. What has been the most difficult part of this course? I would say it's the medical terminology because it's kind of like learning a foreign language, and that's difficult for a lot of people, but they give you practice tests, worksheets, and they go over it a lot in class, so it helps you prepare for those tests really well. Is there a most enjoyable part you could share with us? I love doing the labs, doing uh, the actual hands-on aspects of nursing is what a lot of people truly are seeking because you don't get to do a lot of hands-on in a typical school setting. And it's something you can really enjoy because we're here because we want to be nurses and because this is what we want to do with our lives. Okay. If you, one last question, if you could give any bit of advice to a future student enrolling in nursing assistant program, what advice would you offer them? Prepare to take responsibility for your own work ethic. If you're going to slack off in this class, you're not gonna get the grade you want, but if you're willing to do the work, then you're going to get the grade, so just be prepared to take responsibility for what amount of effort you're willing to put in. Fabulous. Well, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. The function of your heart is to circulate that oxygen-rich blood throughout the body, and those body's organs need oxygen. Certain organs can store a little bit of oxygen for a short period of time, but your brain cannot at all. Okay, your brain is not capable of storing oxygen. So your brain has to have a constant blood flow to it so it can deliver the oxygen to it. Because if your brain goes without oxygen or blood flow, 
it's not going to get the oxygen it needs. And if it's been about three minutes, that's when they say that a person can start having brain damage. So if you've ever heard of somebody who had CPR and maybe they didn't have CPR right away, um, and that they were without oxygen for a long time, that they can have brain damage, that's why your brain and certain other organs, the vital organs of your body. And you remember why we said that? It carries oxygen, and oxygen is needed by every single cell of your body, and uh, which makes up every single organ, right? So there has to be a way that the blood is getting around and circulating the body, and that's pretty much what the heart is for. Okay, the heart is a pretty cut and dry kind of organ, if you ask me, but it might be just because it's my favorite topic. I was a cardiac nurse for a long time, so I was able to study it and get a lot of information about it. But um, the, the cardiovascular system is basically the heart and the vessels that go with it. So we're gonna talk about the organs and structures of the cardiovascular system. We're going to talk about the word parts that are related to it. We are going to talk about diseases and disorders and then talk about the different diagnostic tests and treatments that can be used um, to treat disorders of the cardiovascular system. So cardiology, um, cardio is the word form for the heart and logi is the study of. So cardiology is the study of the heart and preventions of disorders of the heart. And therefore, if a person has heart issues, if they've had a heart attack, if they have um, chest pain, if they have any kind of problems with their heart, they would go to a cardiologist, who is the specialist that's responsible for treating disorders of the heart. So it's a specialty doctor. Cardiologists are different from pulmonary or cardiovascular surgeons, okay? If somebody goes to the heart doctor and they do like a stress test, they do a cardiac cath and they find that they have blockages of their heart, they will refer them to a cardiovascular surgeon who can do um, open heart surgery. Does anybody know someone who's had that? And they have a fancier name for open heart, it's called a cabbage. Okay, and we'll talk about that. So on pages 144 to 145 are your different combining forms that have to do with the cardiovascular system of the heart and your prefixes and suffixes are on pages 145. So you need to know them all. Now you're gonna start, or if you haven't already noticed, that a lot of your prefixes and suffixes are starting to overlap. You're noticing that now, there's some repeats. There may be a couple um, out there that are a little different that have to do specifically with the heart. But for the most part, a lot of them are going to start repeating now. So remember when we talked about the blood and the lymphatic system and the immune system, we briefly touched on the fact that when you look at the diagram, that typically when you see red vessels, they indicate arteries of the heart, right? And arteries of the heart are carried, um, they carry the oxygenated blood, or blood that has oxygen in it from the heart to the vital organs and the tissues and the rest of the body, okay? Your biggest arteries come from the heart and as they branch out into like your arms and your legs and your Okay, thank you so much for uh, helping us here this morning, but uh, I can take just a second to introduce yourself and let us know what school you're from and what program this is. I'm Parker Botre, I'm from John Glenn and it's my second year in culinary, hospitality and management. Great. Parker, could you tell us a little bit about the student responsibilities of this quest class? I know that um, in culinary arts, there's a, a commercial kitchen here, but we also have a component of the class that uh, involves book work. Could you tell us a little bit about the academic work? Yeah, um, so we have to take these serve safe tests that's all about safety and management skills in the kitchen. And then um, knife skills, you have to take that test. Uh, that also has to do with safety. It's a lot of uh, sanitation, making thing, making sure things are like clean and all of that. Great. Uh, some of the expected work habits in this class, such as time management or organization, do you feel that these are important skills to have in this program? Those are very important. Time management, um, you have to make sure the food is on time. You also have to make sure it's not cold or undercooked. 
Um, everything has a time that has to go out for the other people whenever they need it, so we have to be on top of that. Yep. Park, could you just take a second and uh, tell us about the most difficult part of this course so far? The most difficult part for me is knowing where you're at for the day and making sure everyone is doing what they're supposed to and all the parts are coming together. Great. Can you tell us about the most enjoyable part of this class? The most enjoyable part for me definitely was learning all about the different dishes we can make and also learning the management skills that you need later in life. Fabulous. If you could give one bit of advice to any future student enrolling in this program, what advice would you give them? One bit of advice I'd give them is to pay attention to what the teachers say, definitely. Um, all of that information is definitely really important for you and to make sure you succeed in this class. Take a minute to introduce yourself and let us know where you're from. I'm Dave Kayser from Freeland High School. I'm a second year in the auto mechanics class. Great, great. Jacob, it would be great if you could uh, tell us a few things about uh, the student responsibilities and the homework in this class and the bookwork in this class. Tell us a little bit about uh, daily activities in this class. Um, the student responsibilities in this class are all about being on time more so. You got to be on time to finish all the tasks at hand. You have to be on time to the class that you're able to learn. There's very few homework, but when there is, you usually get it done in class if you're on time. Okay, do students come right out here in the lab on day one and start working in the lab? Are there other responsibilities to um, We have to go through safety first. You have to learn everything. You have to learn what to do and what not to do in the lab. You have to make sure you always have your PPE, your personal protective equipment. And yeah, you have to. It's a lot of learning before you can actually learn hands on. Right, good, good. Um, talking about, um, let's see, uh, what the most difficult part of this class is? The most difficult part about this class is probably making sure you're organized. Because if you're not organized, then that's really going to have a downfall. Like we do bell works here every 25 days, you have to turn in. Um, things you do before you go out in the lab or before you start the lesson and if those aren't organized then you, get, you can get a bad grade in this class easy and then if you're working on cards and you lose parts then that's you can't finish that card you have to wait for new parts and you have to pay money. Great. So it's safe to say that organization and time uh, management are all important skills. They are the most important skills you have in this class. Okay, what is the most enjoyable part of this class? Um, the people class the teachers 
I have a lot of fun and we do a lot of work out here and the teachers make it enjoyable and they teach us everything we need to know. And uh, if you could give one bit of advice to a future student that would enroll in auto mechanics, um, what, what bit of advice would you give them? Be respectful of the teachers. They expect it from you, they expect it later in the real world, and they won't stand for it in this class. Thank you very much. Resetting a TPMS system. For those of you that don't know, that stands for Tire Pressure Monitoring System. Okay? A lot of these newer cars, um, for safety reasons, they've added a TPMS system on, on the automobiles. And what it is, guys, is if you're driving down the road and you uh, have a low a tire in your vehicle, it's a, it's a in your driver information system that will tell the driver not only that you have a low tire, but it will actually tell you what tire. Anybody in here have that on your vehicle? Ever see that? Where low, low tire pressure light comes on? Is that a good thing? Is that a safety feature? It's a good safety feature. And all those safety features actually need to work on your vehicle. Okay, they all have to work on your vehicle. In the southern states, it's not in your Michigan yet, but in the southern states, when you go to, um, when you actually go into, uh, uh, you renew your tabs, you guys are with Secretary of State, renew your license, renew your tabs, your vehicle in the southern states has to, has to pass a safety inspection. And if you have a TPMS light on in your dash that says low tire pressure, okay, they will, you will not be able to renew your tabs because it won't pass a safety inspection. So on this tool, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on, okay, and I need to put in the correct information. So I'm going to read TPMS, that means I'm going to read these sensors, I'm going to communicate with these sensors, okay. So I'm going to hit this enter button. Select vehicle GMC, Arcadia, 07 to 08. This year was in 07, so I hit OK. OK, now I'm ready to go. Now, this vehicle needs to be in TPMS reset mode. Does anybody know how to do that? OK, every vehicle is a little bit different. Now, on this particular vehicle, what you have to do to put it in TPMS mode is you have to uh, turn the key on, put on the parking brake, and then you have to take your key fob. You guys know what your key fob is to unlock and lock your doors? You have to hit the lock and unlock button at the exact same time, okay? So you hold on to this. Come on over here and see what we're doing. I'm gonna put the parking brake on. And you guys, some of you might wanna look at the dash. I'm gonna turn the key on and take a look at the dash. See how nothing Nothing's coming on right now in the information center. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the lock and unlock button and you're gonna see something come up on the screen that says tire learning active. That's when you know you're in the mode. So keys turned on, the parking brake's on. I'm gonna come over here to my key fob, hit the lock and unlock button at the same time. You're gonna see up in the dash here where it says tire learning active. That means we're in the mode, okay? So hand me the remote control, guys. Who's got the remote? Okay, come out over here. Aim it down at the first wheel. Come down here. I'm gonna aim this tool. It looks like a remote control of your TV. I'm gonna aim, aim it right at this first sensor, hit the red button, it's gonna communicate with it. So now it's, it's gonna beep when I'm done. Listen to the horn. Here, here beep. Okay, so that one's done. Come on over here to this side. Thank you so much for helping us this morning. If you could take just a second to introduce yourself and let us know what program you're from, that'd be great. I'm Tyler Warden. I'm from Agriculture and Natural Resources. And what school are you from, Tyler? Franklin Luth High School. Franklin Luth High School, great. So Tyler, could you just tell us, generally speaking, uh, the structure of this class, maybe um, what you do day to day on a normal basis? So every morning we come in, we have a question we answer every day. And then sometimes, like when we have the chickens, we go out and weigh those every Monday. Then most of the time we'll go and do some notes. Then after the break, we'll probably go into the greenhouse most of the time and propagate some plants. All right, sounds great you get out of that lab. We'll talk more about that in just a minute, but could you speak just a little bit about uh, maybe homework or tests and quizzes you've had in this class so far? We haven't really had any homework yet, but we had a couple quizzes. Okay, all right, and this class uses Google Classroom. Um, is that anything that's been difficult for you at all? No, Mrs. Kirk does a great job keeping organized and telling us exactly what we need to do in Google Classroom. Great. Um, generally speaking, um, are you using time management skills or organizational skills in this program? We'll use organization, uh, organizational skills quite a bit because we got to keep everything organized. And then time management, we use pretty good too because we have deadlines we have to meet with certain things. Great. 
What has been the most difficult part of this class so far? Probably the quizzes. Quizzes. So Tyler, if you uh, could give one bit of advice to a future student enrolling in this program, what advice would you give them? I'd say uh, be ready. Just it's a lot. It's a really fun class, but just be ready to like study and learn when in science. Okay. Thank you so much. So you have three pounds. Three pounds. Three pounds. Hi everyone, my name is Kayla Passage and I'm a junior at Bay City Western High School and I'm enrolled in the Careers and Education program here at the Career Center. So far throughout this class, I have learned all about building strong relationships, child development, and how a classroom works in a smoothly running environment. While taking this course, we have a strong understanding about differences in children while learning the changes in an educational environment from historical times. Overall, being in this class has allowed me to learn an immense amount of information about developing children and their surroundings. Besides learning in the classroom, we are given a chance to volunteer in the BAISD preschool room and learn firsthand all about kids' behavior, tendencies, and overall atmosphere of the room. Being in the preschool allows us to put our knowledge to the test while also learning more. Other than the preschool, going out to different mentorships gives us a fresh view on educational environments. Being given the chance to attend the Career Center is an amazing opportunity and allows us students to get exposed to what we're interested in, giving us a chance to change our future plans. With being provided with a positive atmosphere and great educators allows high schoolers like us to excel in our future.